वेलकम टू हिस्टोरिकली स्पीकिंग माई नेम इज जयवर्धन सिंह एंड इन दिस पॉडकास्ट वी टॉक अबाउट एवरी थिंग दैट इज हिस्ट्री सो सो इन दिस स्पेस आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट पृथ्वीराज विजय नाउ वेन एवर वी स्टार्ट एनी टेक्स्ट द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन यू नो विच कम्स टू आर माइंड इज वाई दिस टेक्स्ट इज सो इम्पॉर्टेंट और वाई शुड वी रीड दिस टेक्स्ट सो about prithviraj vijay the first thing about prithviraj vijay is that uh, firstly uh, this text is uh, so the basic detail about prithviraj vijay is that it glorifies or talks about the glories of chahaman or chauhan kings and it especially about the uh, about prithviraj 3 who all we who we all know as prithviraj chauhan now why this text is important for us is because this text was written around the second half of 12th century ad so the period of 12th century ad particularly the second half is important because this was the period when the turkish raids were at its peak and we will see that by the end of uh, 12th century AD in in the second battle of Tarayan the turkish power will uh, will get established in northern india so because of the fact that this text was written at the close of 12th century AD and it particularly talks about prithviraj chauhan and uh, and how you know, and its and his reign so that is why uh, this text becomes extremely important as as it was written just before the establishment of the delhi sultanate so that is why we find the uh, that is why this text is very important and if you read this text you will find you will see how the indian indians thought about the turks who in the coming decades will rule a large chunk of northern india so to understand what these uh, people who were living at that time thought about the turks who who will go on to establish their rule in large parts of northern india that is why this text prithviraj vijay is important now <clears throat> let's uh, before we you know uh, talk about the text prithviraj vijay uh, i think it is important to first understand how this text uh, you know has survived and uh, how we know of it so the there is only one manuscript of this text that has survived and this is a birch bark manuscript the script which is written uh, which on which this text is written in this manuscript is the sharda script and the language is sanskrit so uh, so uh, so at the start i didn't mention that prithviraj vijay is a sanskrit mahakavya so the language is sanskrit and the manuscript on which this text is written so the script of this manuscript is sharda and uh, this only manu surviving manuscript was discovered in 1876 in kashmir by a german scholar named george buller now buller is very important because i think those of you who have heard the hamir mahakavya and and also my spaces on hamir mahakavya and also on panchatantra you will remember that uh, even in the case of panchatantra and i i if i'm not wrong even in the case of hamir mahakavya it was uh, george buller, buller who had discovered this manuscript so here again we find that you know george buller was the one who had discovered uh, this manuscript of prithviraj vijay in 1876 from kashmir now the condition of this manuscript is not great and uh, you know i will uh, i will quote george buller himself when he uh, about the condition so he writes that and i quote it is a great pity that the old manuscript is mutilated and in such a condition as to make the work of reading it very difficult the beginning is wanting the leaves which contain canto 1 to 10 have been broken in middle by the friction of the thick string used for sewing the volume further the lower portion of a considerable number of leaves have been lost and as the lower left hand side of the margin on which stood the figures numbering leaves numbering the leaves has also been broken off it is impossible to determine the connection of the upper and the lower halves by any other means than by sense so that was that is the condition of the manuscript which we presently have and what we will see is that uh, 
there are you know uh, there are number of verses in this uh, text which is not complete and by the time of 12th canto we find that at the close of 12th canto the text abruptly ends we do not know how many cantos were there so most likely you know it is quite uh, likely that there were more than 12 cantos and uh, we do not know what was written in the in the lost cantos so and uh, if you read the this text you will find that the narration of this text stops at the coronation of prithviraj so around the 12th canto we have the coronation uh, of prithviraj has happened and suddenly the text abruptly ends so the 12th cam canto itself is not complete and uh, this is quite uh, you know tragic because the text is named prithviraj vijay the victory of prithviraj so this text was uh, you know was written to uh, to commemorate a victory of prithviraj so this victory from the time of prithviraj's coronation to the victory there was this considerable gap which we do not know because uh, it is not uh, the 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 pages in which this uh, this uh, these you know deeds of prithviraj was mentioned has not survived and uh, even the fact that you know what was this victory of prithviraj which this uh, which this uh, text you know is based on we do not know because as 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 we have all seen that the text is not complete so there are you know multiple theories about uh, why uh, what was this victory and uh, the most uh, most scholars believe that uh, it was most likely the victory of prithviraj chauhan over shahabuddin gauri in the first battle of tarain so this was the uh, this was the victory which this uh, prithviraj vijay is talking about now before uh, you know discussing greatly about the title of this text i think it is important to first under uh, first talk about the authorship of this text because as the text is not complete complete and there are you know uh, number of verses that are not complete complete uh, we find that we do not also know the authorship of this text or the person who authored this text but what we see is that uh, there are scholars and most of these scholars believe that it was the poet jayanak who authored this and he was most probably the court poet of prithviraj chauhan and we can say this because uh, if, although uh, in the text which we presently have there is no mention that janak authored the text but in the 12th canto of this text we find that jayanak is mentioned so there are five verses in the 12th canto uh, which talks about jayanak and the way he is talked about it appears that most likely he was the author of this text and interestingly uh, we can also say something about uh, his origins so most likely he was from kashmir uh, and he was a kashmiri pandit Uh, we can say this because firstly in the twelfth canto Kashmir is mentioned, uh, so Kashmir Mandal Sharda Pradesh is mentioned, and then uh, what we also see is that the style of Prithviraj Vijay is quite similar to another Kashmiri poet whose name is Bilhan. Now we all know that Bilhan uh, Bilhan wrote uh, the famous text Vikramanka Dev Charit, which is also a Sanskrit Mahakavya. and what we also see is that this text prithviraj vijay is also quoted by other kashmiri poet uh, so this makes you know uh, uh, this makes this theory that uh, this jayanak was a kashmiri uh, kashmiri brahmin more plausible what we also see is that uh, uh, this there was a commentary that was written of this text and this commentary was written by the famous john raj now john raj i think most of us know him as the uh, he is famously known as the author of second raj tarangani so this john raj wrote a commentary on prithviraj vijay so from all of this it is quite likely that uh, this jayanak authored prithviraj vijay he was the court poet of prithviraj chauhan 
एंड ही वॉज ए कश्मीरी ब्राह्मण नाउ द क्वेश्चन विच यू नो विच इज क्वाइट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर हिस्टोरियंस इज द फैक्ट दैट वेन दिस टेक्स्ट वॉज रिटर्न एंड मोस्ट स्कॉलर्स आर ऑफ द ओपिनियन दैट दिस टेक्स्ट वॉज कंपोज अराउंड द एंड ऑफ ट्वेल्थ सेंचुरी सो द पर्टिकुलरली द पीरियड फ्रॉम इलेवन नाइनटी वन टू इलेवन नाइनटी थ्री एंड वी कैन से दिस बिकॉज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल द नेम ऑफ दिस टेक्स्ट इज पृथ्वीराज विजय that means the victory of prithviraj so as i have discussed earlier this most likely according to scholars was the victory of prithviraj chauhan over shahabuddin gauri in the first battle of tarain so the first battle of tarain happened around 1191 and so this uh, uh, so this text was written to commemorate this victory so this uh, this naturally means that this was written after 1191 now in 1193 we find that prithviraj the, the the second battle of tarain has happened and prithviraj chauhan has lost this battle so this would mean that between 1191 to 1193 this text was most likely composed now the another way to look at this question or to tackle this question of the date of this text would would be to look at the text itself so the text as i have already mentioned that it talks about janak and when you read this text it appears that, uh, although you know here the poet is not mentioned uh, janak is mentioned later but in this regard we find that the poet is not mentioned but it is mentioned that this text was written during the lifetime of prithviraj chauhan and it was prithviraj chauhan who induced the poet to write ab about him so since it was written during the lifetime of prithviraj chauhan makes this you know theory more plausible then another interesting point about the date is that there is this author named jairath who existed in kashmir he was also a kashmiri brahman and he wrote a commentary which is not related to prithviraj vijay but there is a verse uh, there are multiple verse but there is a particular verse which where the author this this author jairath clearly mentioned that he has borrowed this verse from prithviraj vijay now if we know about the date of this commentary or this author we can also you know guess the date of prithviraj vijay so most likely this author jairath existed around the time of 1200 ad so you know the fact that this author existed around the time of 1200 ad and he is talking about a verse of prithviraj vijay suggest that prithviraj vijay was written before 1200 ad and from the above above evidence it is most uh, it is quite plausible that this text was written around 1191 to 1193 now about the text itself there are you know interesting uh, points so first as i have already mentioned that there was a commentary that was written about on prithviraj vijay which was uh, written by john raj john raj was the author of second raj tarangani and and most likely this uh, this uh, this commentary of john raj was written between 1450 to 1475 and from reading although the uh, like the text uh, like the main manuscript this commentary also also uh, not uh, has not survived and we have only portions of this commentary left because what we what see what we see is that this the original text and the commentary was preserved at the same time so that is why the the damage which was done to the original manuscript was also done to the uh, commentary so whatever the case may be what when we read the commentary it appears that during this time that is around the late 15th century this text was quite uh, uh, popular in kashmir and all particularly among scholars and uh, when we read this commentary it mentions that there were various readings of this text so we can say that you know around the time of 15th century in kashmir particularly this text was quite popular and as a literary text it was uh, analyzed by different scholars now 
you know, uh, we have talked about the text uh, quite a lot. So let's talk about what is written in the text. So the first canto uh, talks about uh, Pushkar and particularly it describes the sacredness of Pushkar. So there are number of verses where uh, the sacred of uh, sacredness of Pushkar is described. And there is another text of which I have already done a space called Hamir Mahakavya. So when you read Hamir Mahakavya and Prithviraj Vijay side by side, you will find that the place of Pushkar was very important for the Chahamans and or Chauhans. And this can be seen from Hamir Mahakavya, but especially when you read uh, when you read Prithviraj Vijay, this becomes apparent. And we can say this because there are a number of verses in which the sacred of sacredness of Pushkar is described. Then what we also see is that Pushkar was the place at which the ancestors of the Chauhan or Chahamans appeared. And this story is not only present in Prithviraj Vijay, but we also find that this story is present in Hamir Mahakavya. And so the fact that, you know, Pushkar was associated with the, with the early history of the Chahama, Chauhans and it was also considered to be a sacred place. So this, this is quite important as it shows that there is this, you know, uh, great connection between Pushkar and the Chauhans. Now, Another important point, which, you know, why this, uh, this, uh, this, this Chauhan who went on to, who was the original progenitor of the Chauhans, Chahaman. So this Chahaman appeared in, uh, in Pushkar and uh, we are told that he appeared from the orb of the sun. So this would, and there are other reference, which, which, which would suggest a, a solar origin of the of the Chauhan. So if we read Hamir Mahakavya and if we read uh, Prithviraj Vijay, from here we learn that uh, Chauhans were from the Suryavanshi, uh, Suryavanshi line. So this is what uh, these two texts tell us. Now, now coming back to the question of, you know, why the need of ch ch this Chahaman to appear. So in Hamir Mahakavya, it was the fact that, you know, uh, there was this yagya that was being performed and in order to secure this yagya, uh, this chahaman was, you know, uh, was uh, appeared. But if you look at Prithviraj Vijay, here the, the reasoning behind the appearance of chahaman is quite interesting because the verses where we have the reference of the sacredness of Pushkar, after that, we are told that Pushkar is now being occupied by the Malechas. Now, Malech is, appears quite less. And instead of the term Malech, we have the term Matang. So, Matang in Sanskrit means elephants. So, here, you know, uh, Malechas are described as Matangas. And there are, you know, various verses where we are told that how Pushkar is being defiled by the Malechas. And, uh, and now, what is, uh, what is difficult for us here is to, uh, is to answer whether this description of the Malechas is an is a historical description of a description or not because by the time of prithviraj chauhan this region was not under the uh, under the rule of any turks so if, if this uh, this text is describing malechas who these malechas are so this question uh, I have not been able to, you know, solve why the who were these Malechas that are described in this uh, text, uh, in this Prithviraj uh, Vijay, and uh, who are now occupying the occupying the region of Pushkar. So you know, uh, so you know, when you read this passage where Malechas are described uh, uh, has uh, described as occupying the region, the sacred bond of Pushkar. So. Uh, so we are told that you know matang malechas have taken captive brahmans at the sacred pond of pushkar and now because of the tears of the brahmans pushkar region has become warm 
so this is the you know quite quite a graphic description of uh, of uh, pushkar and then you know uh, alongside the term malechas or matangas uh, pushkar is also uh, these malechas are also described as janangam so janangam uh, means chandal and uh, which basically means those who are outcast so he, so in this verse we are told that you know these janangama malechas are polluting the sacred waters of pushkar by throwing their waste and in another verse uh, it is mentioned that the waters of pushkar where even the apsaras didn't bathe now the menstruating mlecha women are bathing bathing and desecrating the sacred waters of pushkar so you know these are quite graphic uh, descriptions of how the sacredness of pushkars is being defiled then uh, there is this you know another verse of, of this these are these verse are all from the first canto so another verse tells us that uh, so he, here instead of the term mlechas the term pulind is used and uh, we are told that you know once where which is in pushkar saptarishi uh, saptarishi used to make payas from the milk of kamdhenu at the very at the very place now the pulindas are cooking fish that were caught from the sacred pond of pushkar so you know here again this uh, uh, this another example of how pushkar is being defiled by the malechas is present and uh, uh, so so you know this makes uh, quite an interesting reading but the question still remains is who these malechas were that are described in uh, in the in this and who these malechas were who have conquered uh, this region of push this sacred region of pushkar so so you know the fact that uh, the region of pushkar is now being uh, is now under the malechas that is why we are told that in order to get rid of the malechas this chahman appeared so here the reasoning for the appearance of chahman is the fact that the sacred pond of pushkar is being defiled by the malechas and is under the control of the malechas so in order to to get rid of the malechas from this sacred pond and uh, to make it you know pure again uh, chahman appeared from the orb of the sun so this was the whole reasoning behind the appearance of uh, chahman now uh, coming to the so the, so this is the reasoning why you know chahman appeared and from this and there are earlier uh, other references where we learn that uh, here it is mentioned that chahmans are from suryavanshi line now coming to the question of the terms that are used for the turks so first i have already mentioned the term matang although we are not sure whether these malechas or matangas that are mentioned are from uh, are turks or not so it is not entirely clear whether uh, these matangas or malechas who are conquer who have conquered pushkar are uh, turks or not then there is this term called turshk so turshk appears in prithviraj vijay so apart from turshk we have milech and matang now this is quite interesting because for those of you who have listened to the, my hamir mahakavya uh, space there there are multiple terms so the term terms like yavan shak these two terms are also mentioned alongside the terms like milech turshk mudgal so the fact that you know uh, in hamir mahakavya we find quite a different of quite a different terms to describe the turks whereas when we look at prithviraj vijay the number of terms is quite less is quite interesting and uh, particularly the ethnic term is only turshk whereas in the case of hamir mahakavya you have terms like shak yavan pahlav mudgal and turshk also so these five terms are mentioned in uh, hamir mahakavya whereas in the case of prithviraj vijay only the term turshk is mentioned now what is also interesting is that in hamir mahakavya the term shak and yavan are mostly used 
So this makes the question of why the term Shak and Yavan does not appear in Prithviraj Vijay very interesting because we all know that, you know, uh, Mm, these uh, the author of this text surely would have known that terms like yavan and shak is also used for the malichas so why did J jayanak did not uh, talk did not mention the term shak and yavan for these uh, talks why he is only using the term turushka and in my view uh, this you know shows that uh, by uh, during this time particularly the people were aware of the fact that these Turushkas or these Turks are coming from a particular region. And this was the region which was controlled by the Kushan, by the Kushans in the ancient time. And for the Kushans, we have the term Turushka. So because of the fact that, you know, the re region of Turushka is now under the Turks. So that is why the term Turushka is used for the Turks as well. But by the time of... Uh, of, uh, of late 14th century when this uh, Hamir Mahakavya is written, we find that this differentiation of the outsiders which existed by during the time of Prithviraj Vijay is not there. So that is why, you know, terms like Shaka, Yavana, Turushk, Mlech is used as in a generic sense for to describe an outsider. So this is quite important as it shows that uh, by the time of 12th century AD, the people of India were aware of who these outsiders who are trying to invade were. So this, in my view, is quite an interesting point. Now, another question, which uh, uh, another interesting point about Prithviraj Vijay is the fact that here, Gauri is mentioned, Shahabuddin Gauri. So Shahabuddin Gauri is called Gauri, not Gori. So he is called Gori, and the reason behind this, uh, so what this text has done is that the term, first of all, this term Gori is not used for a single person, but instead it is used to describe the army of the Gurids as a whole. Uh, so this is the first text. So this, this is the first point. Uh, to describe the Gorids as a whole, Prithviraj Vijay describes them as Gori. So Gori in Prithviraj Vijay is not a single person. There, uh, It is a group. Then we also see is that the later Ghaznavid rulers who now control the region, uh, region of Lahore. So they are also mentioned. And uh, they are described, interestingly, not by the term Malichas or Matangas or Turushkas. Instead, for, uh, for them, we have the term Hayapati. Hayapati literally means Lord of Horses. And uh, this is quite interesting. Also, another point about these two, uh, uh, the, the later Ghaznavid rulers and Gurids that are described in uh, Prithviraj Vijay is that there is no single ruler that is mentioned. So compared to, you know, uh, compared to Hamir Maka, where we have in where we have Jalaluddin Khilji, Alauddin, Alauddin Khilji, Ulu Khan, Nusrat Khan. So these were the personalities that were present in Hamir Maka. But here in Prithviraj Vijay, there is no such rulers that are mentioned. So Gorid, uh, Gorids are described as a whole as Gori, and uh, the the later Ghaznavid rulers are described as as uh, as Hayapati or Lord of Horses. Now, when you read Prithviraj Vijay, we, or we find that, you know, there is this sense of awe. And particularly, this sense of awe is for the military strengths of the Turks. So, first of all, in Prithviraj Vijay, there is this verse where the which appears in the sixth canto, where we are told that the, the army of the Malachas is described as having plenty of horses. So this is quite interesting. And then, you know, the later Ghaznavid rulers is not mentioned by name, but they are described as Hayapati, which means the Lord of Horses. Then for the for these Ghaznavid rulers, you know, it is mentioned that the Lord of Horses, the ruler of Garjani, is supreme amongst the kings of Northwest who are as powerful as the wind. So 
all the rulers of northwest are as powerful as wind but it was it is the is the lord it is the lord of horses who is the ruler of garjani who is the supreme now garjani is ghazni so you know ghazni ghazni although has already been lost to the gurids but the text still uh, describe the later ghaznavids as uh, as ruling the region of garjani uh, or as the ruler of garjan uh, ghazni so this is quite you know uh, interesting but uh, in the next verse we are told that uh, this lord of horses was defeated and lost his kingdom of ghazni to the evil goris then uh, you know this verse goes on to tell us that this gori so here you know gori should be viewed as not as a not as an individual but as a collective so we are told that the gori strove to become eclipse itself to darken the royal fortune of the entire circle of kings so this now here it is interesting is that you can read it as as uh, as here gori could be individual as well so one way of reading this verse could be that here it is shahabuddin gori who is mentioned and uh, in the other way would be to uh, you know uh, to discuss, to view it as the entire gori uh, gurids uh, uh, are mentioned uh, are described here so you know uh, so from this it is quite clear that uh, this strength of the turks particularly the especially in terms of cavalry has been you know well appreciated by the author of prithviraj vijay so this is the um, uh, some military aspects but when you look at you know how, what was the view of or how these how the prithviraj vijay considers these turks so here what we find is that it is the beef eating aspect which is highlighted you know uh, quite uh, obviously in this text prithviraj vijay so gori gurits are called gori and uh, the name is literally here the name uh, the prithviraj vijay this text converts the term gurits as gori so gori would be literally means go ari which is the enemy of the cows and uh, and there are uh, there is another verse where we are told that uh, these gore these goris are the are described as eating foul food so because they eat beef and they they are considered the enemy of the house uh, enemy of the cows that is why there is this you know negative uh, negative view of these turks and uh, during during the same passage where we are told about you know the term gori and what does it mean we have also uh, the reference uh, it the prithviraj vijay the text describes the uh, the ambassador of the gurids who has arrived in the court of prithviraj chauhan and uh, here we are told that his ambassador this ambassador of the gurids is bald and has a wide forehead which appears to have been intentionally done by god as if to inscribe on it large number of cows he had slain so you know the sin of killing the large number of coins will be uh, will be inscribed on the bald bald forehead of this gori ambassador so this is what this uh, text particular passage is trying to tell us and you know uh, this uh, this uh, this gori ambassador it uh, here we have quite a number of uh, description about this negative description particularly about uh, about this gori ambassador so uh, another verse would be you know this uh, gori ambassador is uh, not gori ambassador particularly but uh, gurids as a whole are described as demons with the bodies of men so nirtanu bhir asurahi so this is the term which appears in uh, in prithviraj vijay and uh, we have already discussed you know the fact uh, that uh, this aspect of cow eating which is uh, which is prevalent according to prithviraj vijay among the turks and uh, then there is 
uh, so you know this uh, ambassador of the prithviraj uh, uh, ambassador of the gurids who has arrived in the court of uh, prithviraj chauhan so there are you know multiple reference so first we have the author uh, jayanak calls him uh, calls this ambassador as impure and uh, then what we see is that we have already discussed that he is described as bald and having a broad forehead so this is there then uh, the color of the is uh, of his skin is also mentioned and uh, it it is described as you know pale pale white and the reason behind this color according to prithviraj vijay is because of the fear of sins this person has committed the color black has shunned his beard his eyebrows even his lashes so the the sin of uh, killing the cows that has been committed by this these gorids so that is why they have this very pale appearance and even their beard eyebrows and lashes are not black and uh, so this is the reason why then another reason why prithviraj the author of prithviraj vijay considers the ambassador of the gurids and the gurids as a whole as impure is because they could not pronounce murdhanya varn so murdhanya varn such as r t th d dh j r sh so these are the you know uh sounds that are not uh, that the uh, these gorits were not able to pronounce and that is why uh, they are described as impure and in another verse uh, you know the co- clothes of uh, this ambassador has been described so uh, uh, this ambassador is compared to a chandal and we are told that just like chandal wearing good clothes spoil the clothes itself and does not make the chandal look good the same was the case with this ambassador so you know the uh, so there is this pretty negative attitude towards this ambassador and in the next verse tells us that uh, that it looked as if this ambassador was not wearing any cloth instead it seems as if his sins have engulfed him so the sin is basically the sin of killing the cow so you know this uh, negative description is quite um, quite apparent in prithviraj vijay particularly about the gorits now interestingly there is no such mention when the later ghaznavids are described so later ghaznavids are described as hayapati lord of the horses so they are not described as malechas and all of these negative description that is there for these gurids is not there for the later ghaznavid rulers so which is quite interesting uh, now one way would be to look at why you know there is this negative description would be to say that uh, the fact that these turks were uh, were killing cows and they were eating beef so that is why there is this negative attitude that is there which is true then i think another way would to look at why there is this negative view which is which is highlighted in prithviraj vijay would be to look at uh, at the fact that this text prithviraj vijay is trying to create a contrast so if you read the text you will find that prithviraj chauhan is described as the in- reincarnation of lord ram and uh, you know the fact that uh, in the in in uh, during the time of lord ram he has he has annihilated many demons so the f- the same will be done by prithviraj chauhan so in order to you know uh, so here the gurids or gori uh, have, have uh, they have now become the new demon and in order to annihilate uh, annihilate these new demons uh, this uh, uh, prithviraj v- Uh, three or prithviraj chauhan has take uh, so lord ram has reincarnated himself as prithviraj chauhan so this is the whole you know picture which this uh, text is trying to paint so you have to uh, this negative description should also be viewed in this uh, regard in my view and that is why you know uh, this aspect also connects 
to the chahaman itself so at the start of uh, the text prithviraj vijay we have the fact that we have this uh, reference where we are told that uh, because in order to analyze the male uh, and highlight the malechas who have conquered who have who were ruling the sacred pond of pushkar the mythical chahaman or the so called mythical chahaman appeared from the orbs of sun orbs of the sun so the same uh, function will be done by prithviraj chauhan during this period so one way to look at uh, the description of uh, the turks here could be in this regard so i think uh, this is broadly the different aspect which uh, i have mentioned and i think there are other important details in prithviraj vijay for example there is this uh, detail about the victory of uh, the ruler of gujarat who against uh, against uh, against uh, uh, shahabuddin gauri and uh, as i have mentioned that by the time of 12th canto the text breaks off and uh, there is this also interestingly uh, in this text there is a lady that appears and this lady is tilotama so tilotama is uh, described as as of having a great beauty and uh, although the text does not as the text uh, so the text is not complete so it does not tell us what happens to this lady or what is the connection between this lady tilotama and prithviraj chauhan is but one way would to speculate whether prithviraj vijay uh, is also talking about the victory of prithviraj over tilotama or not so this is an interesting question and the, there are some scholars who argue in this regard but i will talk about uh, this in a later in later space so i think i will end this space now and uh, if there are any question i will be happy to answer